Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Equestria Daily Fandom Podcast. This week, we are going to try another one of the uh, Q&As that we had up on EQD. We had a post, and we had a bunch of questions, so we'll just uh, get right into it. I would like to introduce my guest for this week. We have the illustrious Q. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here. We are Borg. This is Futile. And (laughs) Alistair Black. Afternoon. Awesome, awesome. So, the first question that we have is, our thoughts on a potential crossover between Transformers and MLP, do we think it'll never, or do we think it'll never happen? Uh, We'll start with Alistair, since I know that uh, Borg, Q, and I have talked about this last week. I'm curious to see what Alistair thinks. Well, uh, for me, I personally, uh, I don't get too into crossovers, but I, I I don't think it's it's very realistic. I mean, I know that they do promotional stuff. Like, we had a what was that? The first Equestria Girls had that one Transformer sound in it. But aside from like a little parodies or little spoofs, I don't think uh, we'll see anything like that anytime soon. Um, but personally, I, th- I think that's probably a good thing. That's just me, though. How about yourself, Borg? I think we'll see anything, you know, unless, you know, uh, Discord opens up and, you know, another portal to a totally different <laughs> dimension uh, again. And tries to throw a pony through, then uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it'll be. I think it'll just be down to just simple sound effects crossing over and uh, promo promo materials. Uh, Q. As soon as Hasbro says yes, I'm sure it will happen. Yeah. But that, until that day comes, nothing's gonna come of it. That's the thing that I think is that I think the Transformers crossover will be the most likely one if they ever decide to do one. Just, you know, they both have... I mean, not only with the Guardians of Harmony toy line being the thing that is, you know, slowly being shown. Like, it would make sense if not only were they trying to market to, like, the little boys with these awesome action figure toys, if they decided to cross over, you know, MLP and Transformers. Because then if you had, like, the Guardians of Harmony toy line and, like, maybe any other additional media that they're planning for it, it's just a perfect fit to have the crossover. I mean, there's a bunch of other cartoons that have done those types of crossovers where the demographic was a little different, but they still decided to make something, like, interesting. Like, there's crossovers all over the place. There's Scooby-Doo and WWE crossover, which is amazing, by the way, if anyone wants to watch that. <laughs> uh, but it's just... I, I think Transformers is the most likely one, but... The likeliness of that happening, not really sure. Well, it simply boils down to if Hasbro wants to do it. Yeah. Well, it's like what do are it. the what are the things that are getting in the way of them doing it, and then what do they have to gain for it? Like, much like the business people, I'm pretty sure are doing like the shareholders and everything, or Hasbro themselves. Like, you got to weigh the pros and cons. Well, the thing here with the Hasbro is that there's really nothing in the way of them to do a little crossover adventure between My Little Pony and Transformers. They own the both of them lock, stock, and barrel, so as long as they keep a certain director whose name rhymes with Michael Say, a well away from the idea, I'm sure it'll end up being something that will be fairly enjoyable and fun to either watch or read, read via the comics. Are you saying you don't want a, a live-action military My Little Pony and Transformers crossover movie? That would be terrible. Maybe Shia Especially LaBeouf will come back. No. That would be even worse. <laughs> I mean, I remember him watching all of the movies that he was in and just being completely sad as he looks at all of them. Maybe he knows that he needs to try and be a better actor now. Well, the thing, the thing with Shia LaBeouf here is that he's not a bad actor. Too much of a bad actor. <laughs> but most of the stuff that he's been acting in recently has been utter dreck. Yeah, just kind of not really given any room to be a character, you know? He's just given, like, a boring character to play. Mm-hmm. And he does what he can with the material, so you can't really fault him for that. Yeah, but there, there's really not much that you can do with the characters that he's given, is the other thing. Like, him, him himself, he's, like, an okay actor, but I don't think he's capable of saving anything like Robin Williams or someone else was able to back in the day. Well, that's because Robin Williams at, takes the script here, throws it away, and abs-libs everything. Yeah. 
Or you have, uh, what's his name? The guy from Always Sunny, Danny DeVito. He just, like, acts as himself. Well, that's because Danny DeVito can act in anything. You can't... There's no... Danny DeVito is just such a class act that you can't really top him. Yeah. Pre- pretty sure Danny... Like, whenever Danny goes on to the uh, the Always Sunny uh, area, they're just like, Oh, no, you don't need a script. Just react. And he'll <laughs> have an amazing performance every time. What do the blog ponies think Starlight Glimmer should do in Season 6? Should she be a Discord tier character or a more main cast type character? Borg? I think that she should be a kind of a Discord tier character. Um, not like inside the main cast, but uh, definitely a, a recurring character. And uh, I, I think I think the show needs more recurring characters with some personality. And I think Starlight Glimmer would be a great uh, a great choice for that, especially if she starts, you know, having, you know, she's just recently reformed, so she definitely has the potential of like. Uh, you know, coming into conflict conflict with um, the specialness of cutie marks versus you know the equality that she used to hold dear. Uh, me personally, I don't mind either way, but I think uh, at least what I would hope to see for it is maybe one episode where they just establish you know what she's what her new role you know should be, whether that be back you know uh, maybe teaching other ponies magic or staying somewhere in Ponyville alongside the main six, but uh. I think they should establish her and just keep her as maybe like a cameo character here and there. Kind of like they have with Discord, you know, popping up every once in a while. But, uh, yeah, aside from that, I you know, I, I think the focus is always going to be the main six. I don't think that there'd be any more, uh, any much more to it, at least, especially this far in. You know, if we're already getting, uh, getting into season six now. I couldn't see him doing anything with it more than just uh, throwing, her in her, throwing her in and letting her uh, move on on her own. Uh, Q? Starlight Glimmer should go to the weekly p- card game that Discord is holding, hosting with, is hosting with himself, Princess Luna, Trixie, Gilda, and Diamond Tiara. Basically, it's the Villains Anonymous Reformation group. So, do you just come into this podcast with fanfic ideas? And no. you just, like, spout them out, and you're like, hey... Uh, if anyone wants to, you can just go ahead and take that. Because that's oh, like, no. isn't that like the third podcast in a row where you just came on and you're like, oh yeah, R- headcanon, go. <laughs> you just tell us. <laughs> it's more endearing if you don't put it, point it out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Why can't anyone here just discuss what I'm bringing up as opposed to you just throw, as opposed to you just showing my evil little scheme? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm sorry. It's the... It's it's the third act. I gotta start understanding what's happening so that I can beat you in the end. <laughs> oh come now, Vicodin. You you're never gonna be able to beat me in the end. <laughs> so my my act my true question is what's her personality? What's Starlight Glimmer's personality? Because what I got from the 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 premiere and the finale is that she's like apart from. Like, once you strip the evil away, and this is kind of something that has been a legitimate concern, is, you know, once you strip the evil away from her character, what exactly, what is her personality? Because to me, she seemed as the type of character that is just very, um... uh, Not there? Well, ambitious. Like, she's very ambitious, and she's very willing to... Emo? Go all the way on what she's trying to do. Like yeah, she, yeah, that's fair. She, she completely believed in her ideology, and she completely believed in wanting to ruin Twilight Sparkle as revenge. Like, there was no, like... It wasn't like a Tyrick, oh, I want to destroy the world, or, oh, it was just... It was just cutie marks for cutie marks. Y- you know, and that is... She kept going up until the basically the very end when she was shown that basically the way that she was going was going to destroy everything, and even then she almost like kept going as a result. So yeah. the the only type of character that I think of when I think of Starlight Glimmer is that she's just very ambitious, and that sort of sets her up to be a Twilight Sparkle two point in the next season. Uh, what do you think, Alistair? Um, I would think so. I mean, it, it does seem like she definitely uh, maybe will be placed, as I said before, you know, getting placed in a certain role. I think that that would be something a little bit more fundamental. 
Um, I still think, you know, because of her ability and everything like that, I think she's probably going to do something like teach magic or go back, you know, to Canterlot and, uh, you know, participate in the, uh, you know, some type of studies there. But Maybe the yeah, gifted school. She, right, right, the school for gifted unicorns uh, academy or whatever it is, yeah. I think that that's, that's probably a very realistic role for her. But, uh, yeah, she definitely has the drive of Twilight. But I said the same thing about, you know, Sunset Shimmer. Um, they kind of have the same personality, and there's always these, you know, uh, people who have these strong leadership skills like Twilight, you know, has seemed to seem to develop over the last couple of seasons. So they're going to have a big part for sure. Um, but I don't think yeah. it's you know, it's going to be crazy or anything like that. Well, I, th- I think the difference is that yeah, Sunset kind of the... actually has her own personality now, right? She's just a li- she's way yeah. more social than Starlight is going to be for a while because well, that's. Sun- well, that's well. That's another thing here is that after the end of the first Equestria Girls movie, you were kind of left with the exact same question that Starlight Glimmer is in with now. Mm-hmm. What's her person personality now that she's no longer a bitch? <laughs> Again, it's not that Starlight Glimmer is going to be Twilight 2.0. It's more like she's going to be Twilight Sparkle 3.0 because 1.0 is Twilight, 2.0 is Sunset, and 3.0 is Starlight. The patch the update. All and the fact that all Trixie the names was are the like exact Twilight same. <laughs> oh god, Trixie was Twilight point five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate goal of Twilight is to become Celestia. So Celestia is like the the primary archetype of of Twilight's and what she wants to be. Yeah, so she is the. Uh, it's just a Twilight factory, is what it is. Celestia is the release, the release patch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Borg, yeah. you have anything to add? Uh yeah, where does Luna fall into that? Oh dear lord, she's so separate. Uh, I mean, she was on the moon, so she's probably like, yeah, you know, the Mac to Celestia's PC. Back. Is she a fork <laughs> in the code? Yeah, you know, uh, as far as Starlight Glimmer goes, she's has, you know, we saw that ambition. She definitely had something to prove, and that's that's what we had. She had something to prove. Uh, the same goes for Sunset. Uh, she had something to prove. And so once you have either, you know, once she no longer has to do that, um, I think she's really going to have to, like, re-explore herself. And you know what? That's great. Um, that's kind of what the show is all about, is exploring oneself and exploring these ponies as we see them. And so, you know, maybe the fact that she doesn't have, we don't know a lot about her real personality other than the fact that, hey, she was evil and was really driven to do this thing, what else is there about there? So that could make episodes with her in it that much more interesting. So how many seasons do you think MLP will do? Do you prefer quality or quantity? I mean, quality, obviously. It'd be nice if Eight. you could do both. Uh, we'll start with Q this this time. It would be nice if the show ended up going for a decade. I don't know if it'll make it that far, but if it, the show manages to get to a decade... That would probably be a good place to stop. Probably, yeah. And at least go into the next generation. Uh, Borg, what do you think? Uh, you know, I probably expect... Um, I expect eight seasons total. I really do. I think that's that this magic number of what they can get away with. Um, I, I feel... Ha- Hasbro really needs to look at kind of what, what the formula is of why this is so much more of a uh, success than... The previous iterations of My Little Pony, um, where it comes to Transformers, they kind of locked into it, you know, a bunch of robots, you know, shooting lasers and stuff. And so it's been real easy to come out with new shows, new ideas, new toys, new movies. Um, yeah. They just kind of locked into the formula of that. And so um, I think until Hasbro really figures out the formula of you know what makes Friendship is Magic that much better than the previous iterations, then. Uh, they're going to keep it around. Well, the, the obvious answer is M.A. Larson. That's right. <laughs> yes, giving everyone wings. Yes, that's clearly the answer. It's not the fact that Lauren Faust ended up creating some three-dimensional, fully fully realized characters from the get-go of the show here for everyone here to build off of. Oh, no, it's not that at all. Nope. Well, if you think, if they make them all alicorns, then they're all going to live forever, and then we can have My Little Pony forever and ever and ever. Aren't you excited about, like, like come on. Yeah, totally. I mean, the best part about every show that you have ever seen is the fact that it has never ended. I mean, yeah, just really? think about it. Like, there's so many great shows. Like, 
like you know, like there's shitty shows that do end, like Breaking Bad. And I know, yeah. All those shows with conclusions. I know. And actual you have the Simpsons, which has been going on and on and on and on and on, and you'll never stop the Simpsons. Exactly. I know the joke awesome never gets old, that. especially when you continue it for decades. Uh, no, but honestly, probably another two seasons after the movie, much like Borg said. I mean, you're gonna get the. I mean, although Borg, you pro- you said uh... if it's two seasons, if it's two seasons after the movie, that's probably gonna be nine to ten seasons right there. Yeah, because the movie's coming out in 2017, so that's next year. There's going to be a season this year, which is six. The season after that's going to be seven. At the end of 2017, or is it? Yes, it is. Oh my god! Someone refresh my memory. Was the is the movie planned to be a theatrical release or yes? Yeah, it has to be. What I understand from what I understand for the movie so far, and what I picked up on it, it is being produced in-house by Hasbro, privately funded by a group called uh, AllSpark Pictures. It's their success, you know, from the Transformer movies. And we have, like, uh, Jason Thiessen, a couple of, you know, star actors and stuff on it. But, yeah, it seems like it's going to be a very well-funded, you know, project. Just like, you know, the transition from, you know, the Transformers movies to the new... uh, I'm sorry, the older Transformers shows to the new Transformer movies. I think that's kind of the idea that they have because, you know, it reached, you know, a crazy... You know, success beyond you know their, their uh, you know their fandom, but you know beneath it, back with the comics and the old animated shows. Once it broke that boundary, and you know they started having these blockbuster releases. So I think that's that's what they're hoping to make out of it. And even if it isn't that grand, well, at least we'll have this cool movie to look back on. Oh yeah, and Lionsgate here is also going to be the distributor. So that right there means it's oh, going to be God. theatrical. Holy mm-hmm. shit, that's that's crazy to think that. Yeah, ponies have uh, gotten this far. Oh, you know, oh, of course, after, after the theatrical release, they, it could go the way of Equestria Girls, and they stop making, they don't make the show, they just make, you know, straight-to-DVD movies, like every As long year. as they have some type of conclusion with the show before that, I would be fine. I, I, see, it ve- I see a very realistic uh, inclination to where, you know, since there, you know, there's, um, you know, this group of bronies, and we're going to be, you know, transcending that to, you know, the you know, the new uh, generation that's going to be coming up, I think that it's it's very realistic. To, even if it doesn't, conclu- or, I'm sorry, continue right after, um, you know, we have the wrap-up that we're probably getting close to here now, I do think it's uh, it's very realistic that in the, in some relative future, it's going to be coming back in another major way. Uh, well, well the thing is, so long as the toy line here keeps selling, and again, that's really the bottom line for Hasbro is, the toy line sales figures here. As long as that's still sell- selling here, I don't see the show being in any danger of shutting down anytime soon. Yeah, and nice. it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case, especially since they just premiered Guardians of Harmony. Right. So we probably have another like three years. That'd be my guess, at least. And that's saying if like they don't release any more toys, like any more like new toys, I mean. Like, if they just do Guardians of Harmony and then they don't do any other additional toys besides, like, the toys that are already planned, like the movie toys and the toys for, like, the next two seasons, then I I would take a guess at around, like, three years. But, I mean, when it comes to quality over quantity, obviously quality, uh, but we don't have quality episodes even now, every time, so... Even when the show was starting out, we didn't exactly have home runs every single episode. Yeah, like, there's there's this kind of gray area between an episode that you enjoy as a fan and then an episode that you enjoy as whatever type of reason that you came into the show in the first place, you know? Like, there's a mm-hmm. lot of people that have, that got into the show because of the, the Greek mythological type stuff that was in the first few seasons and then now I see some comments that are kind of lamenting that there's a lack of that and then other people that got in for the slice of life, other people that got in for the adventure episodes and like, you know along with the you can't please everyone mantra, that's just kind of what happens with all of these episodes as well as you know, you don't have a central writer for all of them, etc, etc uh I mean I feel that every season is getting progressively more better. And be- again, better is a completely subjective term, but I'm getting way more out of it. And like Fee and Seth and I, on one of our first podcasts, we were 
saying pretty much the same thing. Like we feel we're getting more out of each consecutive season because they're getting more room to play around with, much like the comics are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that gives you more ability to play with themes that you previously weren't able to play with or other ideas than compared to like seasons one and two. But on the flip side, you also get way more chances to like fail, you know, way more chances to be too like campy or too pandery or too like preachy, preachy or deciding not to put as much effort in the writing room, like stuff like that. So, I mean, quality is, I'm not going to say that quality is subjective, but I feel that it's only really going to get better from here. But I don't want the show to progressively, like, bury itself into the ground with seasons that, you know, progressively get worse. Even though that's probably what's going to happen, because if they don't end it after the few seasons after the movie, because Hasbro is going to keep being like, hey, can we have more of the show? I know you ended it, but can you have more of the show? And then, <laughs> I don't know, That's that's what I think. Just because it makes them so much dosh. Does anyone disagree? Well, I personally, at least the way I was thinking about it is, uh, I mean, more than anything, we've gotten the content that we have because the writers, you know, have produced it. They have a great production team as it is. Yeah. And, you know, they've spent, uh, you know, with this new, you know, aside from, you know, the color and the fact that they're horses, you know, but almost everything was built up from the ground up. So I think uh, now that they're finally, you know, getting their lore packed down, they're having a chance to really expand on that. It's nothing but opportunities that are opening up, things that they could explore. So I think even if it is continued or they're you know told to continue on with it, even if it's not the best idea, I don't think there's going to be any shortage of you know good episodes or uh, you know content and quality content that we can all sit down and enjoy. Especially considering you know it's uh, it's has the ability you know to become a you know a, you know a comedy or you know have a lot of adventure or danger to it or have a little bit of you know fun on the side it can it's very versatile in the way that you know it can be written and we've seen that in, you know plenty of episodes so i think uh even if it does continue on there's going to be there's always going to be an opportunity for us to continue on uh watching it and enjoying what we're going to be seeing and when you really think about it here pretty much the one location of the show that they've explored pretty much right into the ground is ponyville there's a whole map of Equestria, just Equestria that they right. really haven't looked into at all. Let alone that nice little empire that showed up in the north in season three that they really haven't touched since then. Yeah, well, there's they're also slowly realize or they're not slowly they they have realized it's probably a better way to put it. You know, they have realized that they need to progressively be growing and that they shouldn't be relying on being the same every time. You know, like exploring Equestria is this next season's theme and all the pre previous themes before that, they've been trying to like be more and more different. Like there's no more letters to Celestia. <laughs> there's right. no more journals. There's, you know, they're progressively going past that and going into more of a uh, overarching narrative as well as focusing on character study because they're realizing that Let's you know, you don't you don't need to Yeah, you don't let's just tell a story and you don't have to repeat what happened in the story at the end of the episode. And that saves you 30 to 90 seconds depending on what's happening and you can put more of those 30 to 90 seconds into the other acts. And that, you know, surprisingly the 30 to 90 seconds really matters when you're capable of putting that towards something else cuz that can be the difference between a joke landing and a joke being completely too fast and failing and falling flat on its face. I think quality versus quantity, um, it, it really comes down to just one simple fact. You know, if the writers didn't quality into their writing, then nobody would invo invite them to the conventions, you know, if they love, you know, being guests of honor at so much. You know? Yeah, if the people who, yeah, if the writers didn't actually love the fact that they love what they're doing or really enjoyed the work that they're writing, it's like... It would not show in the scripts here, and you'd get certain episodes of SpongeBob that probably should never have been aired. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you ever, you know, if you ever interview one of these writers, they um, they'll tell you that they don't get to talk to any of these people. Um, they'll meet once during a writer summit, and then they're locked into a tiny room, you know, usually in their own house, you know, if they're lucky, uh, yeah. where they just sit and write scripts, and so they don't they don't get a lot out of it. Um, 
you know, normally. And so the fact that we have this fandom now, suddenly they have fans. Um, I think that has been a motivation for them to really like look at what they're writing uh, just a tad bit more than some other show. Yeah, yeah this well, gives them something to talk about. A lot of talk the writers when they go to all these various conventions. Yeah, a lot of the writers, like Amy, I think both Amy and Emma Larson have both said that like n- n- really no other show cares about the writers. Like that's obviously a generalization, but. You know, they've said that, like, they've written for a bunch of other shows and no one cared whether they were writing for them or not. Like, they were never invited to cons or anything if there even was one for that particular show. But this one, a lot of people really care about the writers because they're the ones who have made these characters so endearing and so, like, timeless in a way. And it's not just the writers. There's there's a lot of the... You yeah, know, there's a the lot staff. that has to go into it, obviously. Like a lot that has goes into it. And a lot of people, you know, are getting a little bit more invested into My Little Pony than a normal show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just a tad bit more invested. Just a tad bit. <laughs> nah. I think well, we've all seen all, Borg's living room. Just think of it as another job, but... Hey, Borg, do you want to send a picture of your room so you can show how invested you are? <laughs> I'm, I'm real invested. When it comes to all the toys you have? Uh, thousands of dollars of investment. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, that reminds me of like, uh, tens of thousands uh, by now. Yeah, that reminds me of when I went to the comic store to catch up on all the comics. And I bought like $330 of comics and the MLP Game of Life and some of the vinyl figurines that I was missing. And it was just like... Yeah. I took oh, a... So you- I oh, t- so you bought the whole comic line. Good. Pretty much. Uh, but I took a garbage bag home. Like, they didn't have regular plastic bags. They gave me a huge, like, bulk black garbage bag to put, like, the board games and all the comics and all the figurines and stuff in there. And I was stacking them in as they were helping, like, the next person. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just so imagining... They con- so they gave you a contractor's... A contractor garbage bag. Nice. Yeah, it was like the the bag was like up to my hips. It was ridiculously huge. And like I'm stacking the, I'm just stacking everything on top of each other. And I like went home on the bus with that bag just sitting on my lap. Just like, do do do. And like no one saw what was in it, which I guess is kind of funny in a way. They thought I was like some drifter or something. And then I just come home, just open yeah. the bag, fill up my shelves. Like, yes. Yeah, you were just sitting there on the bus whistling the theme song to My Little Pony. Yeah. <laughs> just whistling like smile, smile, smile or something. <laughs> like no yeah. one is the wiser. They think I'm humming some Taylor Swift song or something. <laughs> one weekend and I already have half of the McDonald's Happy Meal ponies without hardly trying. How about us? I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any. I have none. Borg? Of uh, the new one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think I have. I think I only have three at the moment. Hmm. There's six, right? Just the, Did they take out the background pony and replace it with like Starlight Glimmer? I try to get two of each. But wh- who are the McDonald's ponies? Like, is it Twilight, Rainbow, Flutter, Pinky, and then Starlight? Uh, I think they have everyone I... from the main six except for Applejack, and then yeah, the background three pony. Other characters. Okay. Yeah, you don't need any background pony. Yeah, I mean, come on. Uh, I mean, the last few years I was very... Um, I got them all the last few years, and this year I didn't realize the McDonald's ponies were being sold until Seth like posted something as I was posting one of my own things. I was like, oh yeah, that's a thing. And there aren't any McDonald's near me, so... I mean, there's, one near, my, I... there's one near my college... But there isn't a McDonald's near you? No. Are you in America? Yeah. <laughs> oh. I am in America. There are actually places in this country where the closest McDon- where the closest distance between two McDonald's is forty miles. Yeah. It's very, very that. rare and it's in the it's very, very rare and it's in the state of Montana. But it does exist. So the fact I mean, that there isn't a McDonald's close to Vic is understandable. I mean, I'm in California, and Montana doesn't exist, by the way. Uh, let me... I'm actually gonna look, and while I look, let's uh, answer another question. 
Learn your geography, Vic. <laughs> what? I'm just saying, Montana and North Dakota do not exist. They are like the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> what if there was an opposite version of the comics called Threats Forever, where it pairs together two different enemy characters from the show for each issue? What two would you like to see in an issue together? Uh, we'll start with Alistair. Uh, two evil characters pitting off against each other. That's a good one. I'd like to see a Tyrick and Twist. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Poor Twist. I think that we need to finally see some final confrontation between them. She tries so hard. <laughs> um, no, but in all seriousness, uh, that's a good one. That's a really, really good one. I do like... Uh, I am a fan of a lot of the stuff they do with you, like, like you know, unicorns and magic. I think it'd be kind of cute if they did something like... Uh, Maybe uh, like Starlight and Trixie or something like that would be kind of cool. Th Bring they could just uh, figure out ways to prank Twilight in revenge. <laughs> but, I mean, that's very realistic. I think uh, Trixie, if I'm not mistaken, she's like not. She hasn't been reformed, but she was. She's not on bad terms with anybody, right? If I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, she was. She came back. Yeah, she's Magic like Duel reformed her, things. or at least reformed she, her as much as uh, he can. I don't know. So previously bad, right? Because the only people who are still bad are like Sombra and Tyrick, and one's in you know, hell and the other one's dead. So Sombra, Tyrick, Chrysalis is still bad, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah, Chrysalis. don't forget the bug. Yes. I forgot all about Chrysalis, dear lord. Um, I mean, there's the amazing idea that blim blim. Aqua had a while ago where it was all the villains get together for like a meetup. And the one that is the most bullying is Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. That's pretty funny. <laughs> like, all well, of the villains think, are just uh, incapable of dealing with Diamond Tiara, calling them, like, calling Chrysalis, like, a creepy bug, and Sombra, like, a fart cloud. <laughs> just, like, oh, the most... a fart cloud! The most immature type of stuff, and the villains are just like, I have a condition! That's so mean! I think, uh... I still need to write that. Way. The, uh, the best way I've seen it described that I personally like it, um, and of course I'm not going to uh, spoil anything, but I'm sure you guys have read the uh, the comic where they kind of uh, show some cool stuff happen. And uh, I mean, that's all of them. Well, I'm talking about the one I where you know, we talking about a lot of villains. I'm behind on the comic, so I, I probably haven't seen it. Are you Damn. talking about Fiendship is Magic and specifically Chrysalis' Fiendship issue? One where I'm she not. actually comes up being, you're not? Nope. Wow, it must be recent oh, then. Oh, lord. No, eh, it's, eh. it's like uh, the main series, I think, number like 30-something. Oh, whatever. you're talking about, oh, you're talking about Siege of the Crystal Empire. I think so, yeah. Were they all, yeah, that, that's, that was probably the coolest one I've seen, and that's, I think that's a very realistic, uh, like all of them kind of, yeah, that was just the best way I've ever seen it interpreted. I really liked how it came out. There was an interesting like, fanfic I read that was like the two sisters taking down sombra and it was like the pr it like led into sombra like creating nightmare moon in a way or like spawning it because he like fills her with the rage that sort of goes That's into nasty. being nightmare moon oh. yeah i'm pretty sure that was actually a fan animation not a story yeah not i kind of story. want I kind of want Nightmare Moon to be retconned and have that be the type of comic that's done. Where, like, Nightmare Moon comes back and Sombra comes... Like, this is already kind of bullshit because you have to, like, suspend all disbelief and be like, oh, okay, they're both back. But, like, Nightmare Moon and Sombra come back and just have them both have this, like, very deep study on why they became what they were. But don't have Nightmare Moon's reason be the bullshit spirit that, like, you know, basically took all sense of uh, responsibility off of her. But Read that's, like, way Fiendship too much magic. into... It's, like, way too much into Dreamland. Uh, what? Read Fiendship is Magic issue one. That's all of Sombra's backstory. Okay. Do I have it? Yeah. I got, you I should. Got then you get the, get the chance to read that main series that, uh... They talk yeah. exactly what you're talking about. I saw the that. Nightmare Rarity one. I gotta reread that's it. That's like the first one. <laughs> yeah. That's how, of the Christ that's how behind I am. 
Yeah, Siege of the Crystal Empire is a badass one. I really liked it. Yep, and it's also and it also has Seth's new favorite pony in it. Radiant Hope. Oh god, there's a he new one. A... I I was should wait, when? He's another favorite? <laughs> yes. After Yes, after a Velvet? certain blow up at PonyCon. He hey. has a brand new favorite pony. Wait, so he he came out of PonyCon and why with a new favorite pony? Is Sweet Velvet just like done now? No, he's still in love with Sweet Velvet. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I think the person who made Sweet Velvet like uh took her under her wing as like her personal mascot or something and Seth felt betrayed. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That was it. beautiful. It was pretty fun. Although Tears it's were yeah, to be expected, it was an OC. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. As we all know, all OCs now, are I, bad. I, now he needs to adopt my OC as his uh his favorite. I think that'd be that'd be the best way to go about it. Or mine. I need to make a female OC, then he'll probably latch onto it. Uh, we're gonna, I got a matchup for you. Uh, I was hoping that I could uh I wanna see some more Owie Zodal. And I think Owie Zodal oh, needs to do yeah. in the, the downfall of, of Queen Chrysalis. Uh really needs to have some changeling henchmen. Hmm. I can see that I happening. Like I wasn't really up. interested in Owie Zodal. I was more interested in Daring Do. Maybe that's just because Daring Do was way more like interesting and daring don't, but like mm -hmm. I don't know. If has Owie Zodal been in any of the comics queue? No, he has not, and neither has Daring. Well, Daring Do has been in one comic, but that was the fictional character, mm -hmm. Daring Do. Not right. the writer, not the... A.K. Yearling. Not the Daring Do who goes by the pen name of A.K. Yearling. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, 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 get behind, I get behind some more Awi Zodal. I wouldn't mind that. Uh, give, Same, me, yeah. give me any villain teaming up with Discord, and it's going to be comedy. Oh, yes. I guarantee it. Di How about Diamond Tiara and Discord? Oh, that would be the highest comedy Twist. ever. Twist Cord. Oh, yes. Twist Cord. <laughs> Alistair, it's not <laughs> happening. Oh, bullshit. <laughs> okay. I remember Night. reading some fanfic a while back where uh, it was Discord and Nightmare Moon. And Nightmare Moon could just, just couldn't stand Discord. That was the best part of the... But... Twilight can't stand Discord, and she's the princess of friendship. Yeah. Nobody can stand Discord except for Nobody can stand Discord. Yeah. Fluttershy. No, that's not true. Fluttershy stands Discord. Yeah, but Fluttershy is yeah. weird. We've already confirmed that. Hey, hey. Well, I think Fluttershy I... is actually in love with Discord, as there's a nice big statue dedicated to that shipping. <laughs> that's true. Can there be a king of the bronies? If so, then what will it take to earn that title? There is a king His of the name bronies. Is Dusty Cat. Well, I was gonna say M.A. Larson. <laughs> no. I think it needs no. to be trial by combat. Whoever can rip the trial rip the arms off of the combatant. No, no, no! It's whoever can give the other guy wings is the, is the king. Okay, no. so Damn it's it, gonna be red bowlers. it's it's M A Larson's sharpie versus Dusky Cat's mustache. <laughs> that will be I pay who, good money to see that fight. Yeah, who, whoever wins will be king of the bronies. I think whatever happens, what comes out of that is Dusty Cat's mess, mustache with wings. Most like, but then that means that M.A. Larson won because the mustache can't accept the wings, or else that's defeat. <laughs> this, this is true. What is for everyone in the podcast? What does your favorite color taste like? Pink. That's Wait, it. What? What does our favorite color taste like? Pink. What's your favorite, favorite color? color taste like? Yes. I was gonna say uh, wax. Uh, uh, my favorite uh, color uh, probably tastes like um, glue. Like glue as well for me as well. Yeah. Do you guys like? Do you guys eat glue? Is that no? No. I just don't you, know what. You know, not not regularly. I mean, I'm pretty sure this question is intentionally uh, confusing. So, what are our thoughts on? Sometimes hash... glue's the only thing. Sometimes glue's what? The only thing in my fridge, honestly. Just... <laughs> yeah, it's fair. What? That glue and ramen noodle budget. Oh yeah, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> there's the uh, the classic college student budget. Classic. Yeah, glue I've had rum in the past four days. I've had rum in the past. What is it now? Ten years. Step it up. We can do it. Yeah, it's cheap. It is. That's the best part. And it's high in salt. Yes, I can it, afford all my imported cigars. Just like me. Ah. So, Brilliant. 
So what are our thoughts on hashtag WTFU, which I think is where's the fair use, and YouTube's fair use policy? Uh, <laughs> so I did a video with ANY, I think, two years ago about button mashes cease and desist, basically saying that copyright and trademark laws are extremely old, and they haven't been touched in forever, and the only time that they have been touched was to have copyrights and stuff extended on behalf of the people who make them. I'm going to get copyright and trademark confused because they're both really confusing, but one of them is like, it used to be when the person died, they get the copyright for a certain amount of time, and it's only been extended every time. It was like 40, and then it was 70, and now it's like 90, Century. I think. I think that's Disney's fault at this yeah. point. Yeah. It is Disney's it fault. It used to be called... Specifically because of the mouse. Yeah, it used to be called, like, there was a bill that passed Congress, or I think I think it passed, that was going to be like, it extends copyright ownership past the death up to, like, 90. And it was called the Disney Bill, or, like, the Mickey yeah. Mouse Bill, because they, Disney lobbied a ridiculous amount in order to get that bill to pass. Have, uh, have you guys ever heard of CPG Gray, the YouTuber? No. He has a, he has a video where he, I mean, he's a... Very smart guy, and he breaks things down uh, better than most people I've seen online. He, uh, uh, for example, his Patreon makes like thirty-seven thousand dollars every time he releases a video. I mean, he's he's really good at what he does, and he gets a good audience. But he has a video where he breaks down copyright law and exactly when it started, how it progressed, and where it is now. And mm -hmm. he talks about yeah, how uh, Disney basically made it to where chances are Disney will never be available for people to utilize that content. He said that Star Wars technically should have expired by now. Um, but through the through the laws being extended by the companies, and especially now that Disney has that, we'll never nobody in our lifetime, chances are even beyond, will ever be able to utilize uh, that content freely. Well, the thing is that eventually the original Star Wars films are going to, and I mean the original theatrical versions of Star those Star Wars films are going to end up falling out of the copyright law eventually, unless Disney were to start oh I don't know releasing the original unaltered versions. Yeah. No, they would never think of doing that. No. No, never. never. Not in a million years. Yeah, or I mean, me. yeah, like, I don't know. Copyright and fair use. The, the, the thing with all of this stuff is that we're kind of already given... Well, it depends on how much of a leash you want, because, like, with... I said this about, like, button mashes cease and desist, too, because everyone was like, oh, why don't they just sell a, a thing to Jane Animations saying, like, oh, you're allowed to make this show. And then it's like, everyone is going to be bombarding Hasbro with letters saying, why him and not me? Yeah. And that's basically going to be the thing. Is So, like, uh, you know, button mash got cease and desisted. Fighting's Magic got cease and desisted. Most recently, Project M, which was a Super Smash Brothers melee clone, got cease and desisted like a few months ago, uh, just because it's a mod on a video game that was getting a lot of. It's did the same thing that, uh, what's it called? Fighting is Magic did in order to get cease and desisted. It made a bunch of money at Evo. Like, once once you make a significant amount of money, and I know, like, $10,000 means nothing to Hasbro, like, that's, for being a fan project, that is not a insignificant amount. And along with that, no, like... No, it is not. Yeah, like, fan fiction in general, like, writing a fan fiction, I'm pretty sure is against, like, copyright law. It is. Like, just, in, like, not even making any money off of it, or, like, doing any, like... Once you publish it somewhere whether it be, like, fan fiction or anything like that. Like, the laws are so skewed that that is immediately against the law. So, like, I mean, A, I'm kind of... I mean, A, fair use laws are bullshit because they're never defended correctly. Uh, B, it's kind of has to be that way just because of the current cultural idea of having our ideas wanting to be, like, saved and stuff like that. But on this... Like, everything is a case-by-case -case basis when it comes to fair use. And case-by-case -case basis are never a good thing, because then you have to just go through a lot more of a meritocracy type of ideology for your own copyright. And it becomes so much more difficult to go through all the courts to actually prove that, yes, what I was doing here was fair use and not... 
copyright infringement. Yeah. So really, when it comes down to all of it, it really is uh, might makes right. With yeah. you know the people with the most money, the people with the most power or the most influence are the ones who get to set the rules, get to make the rules, and they get to you know influence the decisions regarding them. And so, well, that's because know, they're all the ones who are in Washington. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is a this is kind of a cultural thing when it comes to our country because Japan, on the other hand, has like very lax copyright laws. I mean, you see it all the time. There's a bunch of people that make uh, fan work. C- comics basically off of other like animes and there's really not much you can do about it yeah that's actually viewed as a training ground for future manga artists yeah like artists they just in japan yeah they basically do what we do like <laughs> they write fan comics or whatever based on current media and then they get recruited that way and like there is an argument to be made over whether that can be the type of like ideology that other companies should do and there are some that do that like blizzard has hired former fans of their own websites like i'm pretty sure there was a documentary i think that had they said that basically someone did a movie type cutscene thing for one of their warcraft games and now he's the lead designer of like cutscenes in world of warcraft so Probably for another time, but that sort of argument can be made over whether you think that should be your type of ideology. Uh, now, again, it's not so much as an ideology of the company. It's that the laws of the United States here are very, very specific as to what constitute as actually defending a copyright and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. So unless the companies are very active in defending their copyrights, they're going to lose them. So Yeah, and there's no way Hasbro is going to allow any of their characters to be lost. Any of them. Like, that's just bad news all around. Well, yeah, no, they're copyright. Not going not gonna to be lost again. Yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not only for their shareholders, but just as a, you know, type of company morale type thing. I'm pretty sure that if they lost one of their characters by some, like, say it just, poof, they don't have Twilight Sparkle anymore, their, their share is going to drop a lot. Just because that's a very bad example of company management and trademark management. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, long story short, after that huge rant is that fair use has never really been fair. YouTube kind of helps with trying to defend fair use, but I don't. you kind of have to be as small as possible to avoid having... The, the big guys look down at you. I mean, that's kind of the thing with all of these fan projects. And it's it's always case-by-case case basis, and it's not really fair, but eh, what are you going to do? Uh, when are you guys going to overthrow Seth and claim your rightful places on the EKD throne? He keeps dodging my poison knives, so... Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean... I keep wanting to turn Equestria Daily into Diamond Tiara Daily, where we just post nothing but Diamond Tiara pictures and editorials and stuff every day, but Seth told me that wasn't a good idea, and I don't know what his deal is. We'll find I don't out. think that probably it's has something to do with all the little knives the we have. Yeah, I mean, I keep, I just keep throwing the poison knives at him. I want to just turn EQD into Game of Thrones, but I know that my reign as king will be quickly shorted by Aquaman, who will just rugby tackle me off of a building. Oh, come now, Vic. You haven't got... You weren't at the last... You weren't at the last convention where we all showed up together here. There was a huge brawl, and uh, once again, no one won the Deadpool. No one won the Deadpool? I'm, I'm missing exactly. context. Go watch Deadpool, and you'll understand. Oh, yeah. I need to go do that. I'll probably go... You haven't watched Deadpool? I haven't read the comics, man. Uh, I've been You're told scared. that it's really good, so I should probably go, go do that, watch it. like, relatively soon. It's pretty good. Does Nyx deserve to be it's brought back? It's got Tony references in it. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Does. Kind of. It does. Sexual pony references. Oh, my Sexual God. Sexual pony references. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's the best. That, that seems like something Ryan Reynolds would sign off on. Uh, <laughs> he does... gets off on it, too. Can we not? <laughs> Can we not? <laughs> Uh, he's not kidding, Vic. I'm, I'm dead. He did. Jeez. He's dead serious. Oh no! I even he posted about did. it on EKD. 
Oh my god. Please oh, no. Did you? Yeah, I posted about it. Oh. Well, <laughs> on there. Does Nyx deserve to be brought back to today's fandom and or does she still hold up? I never thought that she held up to begin with. Who? Who? Nyx. She's oh, the, the she's the or No, no. Yeah. She's Nyx. The, the yeah, from Past Sins. She's the yeah. childlike nightmare moon personification. Yeah. And I always thought she was a terrible character. I like I thought, Penstroke. I thought she was cute and endearing. Penstroke mm. is a nice guy, but he does not know how to write children characters correctly. He <laughs> he failed writing Spike, and he made Nyx completely boring up until she basically absorbed the Nightmare Moon spirit. I mean, <laughs> Nyx is kind of like Snowdrop, right? Their only no. characterization is everyone else feels sorry for their existence. Or tries to hold them up to be a good character. That's how I feel. I could, I can probably be wrong. That's mean to say. I probably am wrong. But from watching Snowdrop and from reading like the first seven chapters of Past Sins, I could not stand Nyx in general. That's fair. Why don't you ever post Sweetie Belle headers on posts that matter? Because she's not Bab Seed, who is and best dumb. CMC. And her She's best not... meme is Dumb Fabric. Dumb... Which I really should have used for the Joanne Fabric post earlier today. Pancakes stupid or waffles? Q, stupid, stupid Q. Pan... Oh, pancakes. Waffles. Uh, I actually don't know. I don't care. <laughs> what do you do in a post-pony world as in after this thing is no longer really a thing? Uh, well, I get some sleep, actually, probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Seth will be, finally go to bed. Seth will After all bed. these years, he'll finally... Fi that's funny <laughs> right there. <laughs> that's, yeah, a, probably... that's a 2014 meme right there. Yeah, with a little bit of luck, I'll be writing comic books by then, so... <laughs> the the better question is, how long until I change my living room decor? Uh, yeah. That's never. I mean, the thing that I always joke is, since I'm going for a journalism degree, I'm going to... Uh, go into just a regular city news station, do a little reporting for a while, and then just completely sell out to one of the three media moguls that we have and just completely tell lies and slander until I retire at the age of 60 with a mansion. So you're going for a journalism degree. Wow, you're really going for a degree that's in a dying industry. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm screwed. Yeah, you don't <laughs> need a journalism degree nowadays to report on the news. Yeah, totally. As made clear by <laughs> just the <laughs> yeah, as, as made, made clear, clear by, by internet. Let's just uh, put let's a just big huge on. beep, like a big huge beep sound, and like we're just gonna say like all of the no, we're not. But that's everyone. Journalism's dead, and I'm sad. <laughs> I'm so sad. The only yeah, know, journalism we get is from comedy shows now. I'm so sad. <laughs> How is and this? they make oh, so oh. much money. Oh my god, I'm crying. <laughs> I mean, people wonder why we do like the the top five blah blah blah. blah. It's because it works. Because it works. Journalism it's great. is dead. Journalism yeah, it's because is dead. It gets I mean, people to read. <laughs> they let me write, so it's you know, you can get screwed. <laughs> hey, they let me write too, so it's kind of like know. yeah. But then again, I conduct interview. Then again, I was conducting interviews, and that's what got me onto the staff. So Seth has I was made doing something journalistic. Seth has made three terrible choices with all three of us. Alistair, you're actually fine because you do good art. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's still, I still, I have no idea what I'm doing at the time. Yeah, I, I mean, in a post pony world, I'm probably just going to latch on to anime, even though anime sucks. I might find a few good animes, and then. So you'll be Seth 2.0, got it. Yeah, or maybe I'll go back into wrestling. WWE. Uh, what? No sh Yeah, I've been, wa I've been having... I, I watched a lot of wrestling over the years. I keep, like, peeking my head in. But, like, this year for WWE has been terrible. But maybe when they get a bunch of new wrestlers that are actually entertaining, I'll, go, I'll just go back to WWE. Vite, what do you think of the... What do you think of the WWE Subway Twitter? That wait, what? The WWE Subway Twitter. That's a thing. That is a thing. Apparently, it is where they describe Subway 
using nothing but uh, WWE, uh, WWE clips. So, like, the, the sandwich company. Yes, the sandwich company. I'm so confused. What was every pony's or your own crowning achievement of your pony blogging career? Ooh. I have two. Uh, we'll start with Q. I thought you guys were going to go into your two. <laughs> so please, you have two. Continue the conversation. Oh my goodness, wow. I'm going to look right. them up real quick. So the first one was the one follow-up that I got to do, which was the Scaremaster follow-up. And just like with any other follow-up, I basically just, the introduction that I did, I just had a blast with. And then, of course, like, a few of the comments were, you should never do follow-ups again, then the few of the comments were, this is the best I've ever seen. And just like Aquaman, I basically got to get get away with whatever I could. I put in, like, Hearthstone references, and I put in, like... I, th I think, like, a Colbert reference. Like, I gotta look. And then the other pony blogging career thing is probably the depression editorial that I did was probably one of my favorites just because that one I've been thinking about doing for like since I joined EQD I've been wanting to do that but I was never able to to really think about how I wanted to structure it and then when and then when season five ended I kind of still had it on the back burner because I was like, I don't really know how to structure it. And then finally one day I just wrote it in like two hours. I just knew exactly what I wanted to say. I just put it in the back of my mind for a long enough time. <laughs> and then and then like pretty much every comment was like, wow, this was really good. It was like, yay. How about yourself, Q? Pretty much every single interview that I've done for the site has been an amazing experience to go through. And that counts as one. Mm -hmm. As one thing in encompassing all of them. Getting to sit down and get to know just about everyone on the My Little Pony comic book staff has been really, truly eye-opening as to what exactly it takes to go into the uh, comic book world and all the various different paths that it, every, each and every single person took to get to the exact same point has been... Truly, truly fascinating to look into. Yeah. And the other thing here that I'm really super proud of is the little project that you and I are working on, Vic, that we hasn't exactly come out yet. Oh my god, I cannot wait for that. Hint, hint nudge, nudge, preview! Yes, I... <laughs> preview. Yes. The, the, both of, the both of us are going to... We're, I hope that we're going to knock that out of the park. I'm, I'm so excited for it. The, that project. Oh yes. How about yourself, Borg? I have the disadvantage of I'm you know I'm the new kid on the block who hasn't written these things yet you know I've only been doing this for like a month I think at this point um, I, I'd have to say of the you know the the six or seven things that I've written thus far um, one of my you know I think my achievement thus far and there's you know there's definitely more to go more to come um, was when I accurately predicted. Um, the season six air date um, to be you know this spring kind of either you know I, I said uh, late April um, or or you know after after late April which you know during the Hasbro presentation we said is May and so uh, doing all that research and and trying to get into the the workings of of you know Hasbro and their fiscal years and and. Um, you know what shows they have left and what they're planning to do in the future. That that was pretty cool. That was uh, that was a huge feel. That was a huge rush um, when uh, it turns out I was right because you know a lot of people were very hopeful that it was going to be you know it's going to be there. But you know most everyone else was like, oh well, you know the hiatuses keep getting longer and longer and longer. So it probably won't be until fall until we get some more pony. Um, so luckily they were wrong. Yeah. Hey, what about when you sooner. actually? Yeah, what about when you accurately managed to analyze the Guardians of Harmony toys before the nice little in-depth in-depth video came up showing the tour of the Hasbro booth at Toy Fair? Yeah, you know that's actually uh, that's actually another one. I was I'm actually staring at the you know homepage right now, and the five 
you may have missed in Guardians of Harmony is at the top of the popular posts. Um, uh, that was, you know, that's just me paying attention to stuff um, and just, you know, being really obsessed with toys. I don't think that so much of a uh, of a success as it is um, a, a blatant reminder of a, maybe a problem I have <laughs> hoarding toys and all things MLB. <laughs> um, but no, that was that was definitely really cool uh, seeing all the uh, all the 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 little little hint bits and pieces there finding that fan series and and stuff that was that was definitely a, a good one too so i hope i hope i can definitely uh write more fantastic you know pieces uh in the future yeah i'm, I'm looking back at the follow-up that i did i made a, a reference to the league of legends champion games like who was gonna know what that was <laughs> The Raridash shipper, there's your fodder. The one shipper, the flutter, the flutter rarity shipper. <laughs> I just like fired a bunch of shots, just like making fun of a bunch of stuff. Like here's Fluttershy's That's... mating call. She was summoning other bottom tier characters and Spike. And that's pretty much all that follow ups are. Is that <laughs> you're just busy having fun? Yeah, you just basically have it. Oh my god. I wish that my Discord episode was actually had more joke, had more had joking more, stuff. Yeah, because the thing is that when I actually got to review my Discord episode, it's like, okay, first two thirds of the episode, great. Last third, they're repeating every, they're doing a joke highlight reel from the first two, two acts. So it's like, yeah, I have my I'm own. Not, I'm not gonna throw out the exact same jokes again. Yeah, I have my own quips about what about Discord, but we'll we'll save that for another time. Uh, it would have been funnier how they actually de- it would have been funnier how they actually made it a parody of what about Bob? I have no idea what that is. What's what it's about Bob? Fan- <laughs> it's a fantastic movie starring Bill Murray. Go watch it. Oh, Bill Murray, it has to be good. Is there one feature you've always wanted to have on the site, but due to technical time or other limitations, you would not been able to implement them? Uh we always want to be able to do more stuff, but EQD has always been like volunteer work, you know? So it's really hard to keep doing, like, not only the stuff that you're already doing, but like new stuff. Like, once the hiatus gets off the ground, it, I'm pretty sure it's going to be way more busy, both on our sides as well as like. It always is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, obviously, when there's a new episode every week and when there's like new news and like this that and the other everyone making new videos because you know there's more pony it's it's really hard to because that's the thing i started doing this podcast like two weeks before the hiatus so it's like really easy to be like oh hey we'll just do it every week and then like you kind of like it's not that we're grasping for straws but like it's going to be really hard to keep this up when the when there are more opportunities to not only post other other stuff, but when, like, finals come around and, like, you know, getting into oh, senior not- year of college, like, there's just always something that the priorities are always out of whack. So there's always something that we always want to additionally do, but it's hard to juggle it all. And I'm pretty sure Seth would agree. How about yourself, Borg? Uh, no, we... Uh, Seth is always looking for looking at new crazy things and he side tracks a lot of them or, or back burners a lot of them mm-hmm. um, you know it's uh, Equestria Daily has is there's a formula that goes into it and you know when you you know sometimes it's 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 not necessarily a limitation it's just you know we for you know for the good of Equestria Daily and, and you know the, the the readers and stuff you know sometimes you just don't want to mess with it Mm-hmm. Uh, and you really have to think about all the angles of what could possibly happen before you even like try. You know, yeah. there's there's things that you know Equestria Daily has tried that haven't worked out well. Yeah, like EQ music, like, like EQ music, um, you know, and stuff like that. Um, that's that's why you know he constantly has these posts of hey, what should we try next? Um, you know, which resulted in, in things like me writing articles. Um, that. And the mascot ponies, which we're currently working on trying to do stuff with. Yeah, yeah the mascot ponies, which are adorable. Um, so you know, there's, there's, it's, it's, it's really about, it's really about analyzing the risks 
and um, that you know there's there's some time limitations with that and so you know we don't try to jump up into any you know jump into anything you know we want to we want to play it safe we want to make sure that uh, everything everything we do on EPD is, is going to look yeah and, you know, every, just be the every, best every new thing that we do is a commitment you know and, and that, that's that's true too absolutely like there are some posts that are like, oh, we can do these every now and then. And then there are some posts that are like, oh, every week. Like the editorials and the podcast and the like. draw friend is every day because, you know, enough people like it. It's like if you, if you make a commitment in order to do something and then like a bunch of people like it, that's way more pressure. Because if something like – if you do something and like not many people like it, you're like, okay, we'll just try something else. And, you know, you may have liked it, really liked wanting to do it, but – you know, there are a certain amount of time slots, so. Yep, and then you've got and you've got me doing the comics, so it's kind of like, and those come out bi-monthly with various posts coming out to cover preview, three-page preview from Apple, extended preview from IDW, mm-hmm. the solicitations when they first come out, and then the actual release and discussion posts, which come out, oh, I don't know, uh, every other week or so. Yeah. So it's like I've got something to do at least once a week, but but beyond that it's actually not exactly trying to do anything for the comics too too much schedule wise. The main thing here with the comics here that the one thing that I rem- feature that I remember that was tried and I absolutely refused to do is the is the comics follow up post as which would have been a similar idea to the, the episodes. Episode episodes. Yeah, two things prevent me from doing it. One, time. Mm -hmm. And two, when you're taking out panels from the comic, it's not the same as you're take. It's not the same as you're busy searching through the episode, looking for little screen grabs. It's like, oh, uh, that's an animation error. Oh, that's so funny. Let's go post that. Post that and make a funny joke about that. It's like you'll basically be posting the entire comic. If you do a follow up, and then that disincentivizes people from not only buying the comic or something like that, but that could get us into actual problems with IDW, quite possibly. Yeah, and we don't want to be in trouble with IDW. Yeah, no, no. sir. That's a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, we can give them negative reviews and do other things about that, but yeah, but no, actually posting copyrighted material. Yeah, no, 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 no. That would make all sorts of bad things happen. Uh, will you guys be willing to publish articles written by readers? I always wanted to try writing an interesting article, but I don't know. I'll have to ask Seth, Seth about that, actually. Well, that's kind of how I got started. Yeah, like, that's how Borg and Q and I kind of got started, is that we, like, gave them... We gave Seth ideas, and Seth was like, okay, like, show me the work, show me the what you have planned for it, and then we showed them it, and then, boom, our editorials are on EQD. Like, if the... If the writing is concise and really good and stuff like that, I would imagine that we wouldn't mind having a guest editorial every now and then. I mean, there is a tag for guest editorial, so we've had one before. Mm-hmm. Um, and with and with me, I started actually, up with doing... uh, last year. Seth actually put out a post requesting guest editorials, so, mm-hmm. um, so yeah. I don't know if it's yeah. That was probably before I got on board. I would yeah, imagine, and for me, because I started we haven't really out. asked for any yet. Uh, but I'll I'll definitely ask Seth about that. Uh, thank you for the suggestion. I'll see what I see what happens when I ask him about that because I wouldn't mind at all if there's a really good idea that like I never really thought of and someone presents it in a really interesting way. Then yeah, and f- yeah, why not? Yeah, and f- yeah. For me, I started out by doing interviews, so mm-hmm. I just said, "Oh, uh, I'm going to do this interview for Equestria Daily." Daily before I was even on staff, but it's like I'll be sending it into Seth, and I've already talked to Seth, and he agrees that he's going to post it. So, yes, it was an interview for Equestria Daily that I did, <laughs> and it just and I kept on doing it and doing it and doing it, and there you go. Yeah, yeah definitely. There's great. just there's always you know if the if the content is good, there's always you know room on EQD for it because we like showing off not only new talent but really good content. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on on that note, I think that that's uh, all the questions that we had for this week. So I would very much like to uh, thank you for listening to this week's Equestria Daily Fandom Podcast. And I would also like to thank Illustrious Q. 
Thank you, everyone, for having me once again. It was a true, true pleasure. We are Borg. It was great to be here. And Alistair Black. Thanks for having me. See you guys later. We'll see you next week.